Hello and welcome to Firearm Freedom. This is going to be another first impressions video. In today's first impressions video, we are taking a look at the Midwest Industries Extended Carbine Rail. A huge supporter of the channel right now is Gators eyewear. They do not pay me for this ad space. I just simply love their sunglasses and ballistic glasses, and I am also an affiliate with them. So it's a great win-win. If you want to support the channel and you also want to buy some cool product, you can click the link in the description or the link in the comment section. And there's also a discount code there. It's a solid one. It's going to save you like 30 or 40 bucks off of your sunglasses. If you're just looking for some awesome polarized sunglasses that are traditional, like the Skyhooks or the Starks, which I wear frequently in these videos, those are on there. And then also, if you're looking for some heavy-duty ballistic glasses, they have those as well. I have the Spectres, and those things are freaking awesome. Father's Day is coming up. That's a great gift, and I seriously appreciate your support. We are going to be taking a look at this awesome, awesome quad rail today from Midwest Industries. As always, full disclosure, what is my relationship with Midwest Industries? There was no exchange of money or anything like that. However, they did send me this extended carbine rail to check out. And there's really no other videos on YouTube about this rail. I saw like one or two kind of videos somewhat talking about it, but I'm excited to give it a full review because I think for the value, this thing is awesome and it completely transforms a basic AR-15 into a very, very usable platform that I'm pretty excited about. It's a little bit hard to find on their website and kind of my first feedback bit of information for Midwest, I would list this separately. Currently, right now, they have it listed under the free float drop-in quad rail section, and you have to choose extended carbine length. And it does show you a photo, but it's not entirely intuitive. So I think for the general public that's trying to find this item on your website, it would really be a benefit if you just listed it separately and labeled it on the website extended carbine rail and just show a photo of it right out. I think it would be a lot easier, again, for people to find it. What you have going on here, you'll notice this rifle that I'm running this on is actually my very first AR-15, the Ruger AR-556. And I think it's a perfect example of a rifle that this rail would go good on. You'll notice that we have the drop-in quad rail style here in the rear. And that's gonna be the same carbine length that you would normally have except it's extended out in front of the front sight block slash gas block. And what you're gonna have here is a cutout so that you can still use your fixed front sight and still use the gas block. You don't need to cut anything off and it is going to give you a quad rail all the way through. So if you want to run a light, like I got the big Chungus ProTac 2.0 here on the right hand side, which surprisingly doesn't look bad on this build, I will say. It's a massive light, but because it's kind of an old school setup, it actually works pretty well. But regardless, I can now mount this. Instead of way back here or having to get a long extension, I can mount this all the way in the front of my rifle. And now I am right up where it normally would be on a full length free float rail. And it allows me to get this light to where there's really no shadow, which is huge, unless I'm running a suppressor. And that's really nice. And I can also still run my pressure pad off to the back here where I would normally run it. So it's the same exact thing that I would normally have with the drop-in quad rail. And then also you are going to get the same height, which I really like. There's a lot of extended carbine length rails out here, quad rails like this, that have this front portion like way down lower, which in some aspects I understand when you're looking at zeros and lasers, and yes, it's closer to the barrel, but in a lot of aspects, I think the leveled out just looks better, looks a little bit more proper. And of course, this is a very rigid setup. So mounting a laser aiming module up here for night vision shooting or whatever else would actually actually work really, really well. It's gonna hold zero, it's gonna place it in front of the front sight, and you should have more than enough room for any laser aiming module to fit up here. So as far as a night vision use gun, this is an awesome piece for that as well. Now I know a lot of people were curious when I was posting the picture of this on a Ruger AR-556. So on a normal AR-15 platform, like an MMP-15 Sport 2 
or something like that, or, or a Wyndham, or any other standard, basic M4 style upper, it's going to drop right on. You just have to remove the sling swivel on the bottom of the front sight block here, and it's going to pop right into place. However, the Ruger has a milled aluminum front sight block, and it does have a QD insert there on the bottom and it kind of flares out a little bit. It's not immediately compatible. I had to take it to the grinder quickly and just kind of like flatten out the sides. It took roughly like five seconds and trust me if I can do it and normally I can't do anything when it comes to armoring items without messing it up. If I can do it you can do it without issue and it works out really well. Now, the other thing that you will need to switch out if you have a Ruger that you wanna do this to is the barrel nut. Ruger has a proprietary barrel nut and delta ring setup, and it's a twist off option. Now, when you're looking at a drop in quad rail, that's actually really nice to have. However, when you are looking at trying to put a rail like this on, it needs a mil spec barrel nut. So that barrel nut, that factory barrel nut has to come off in order to get this on. Again, basic armoring task for an AR-15 upper. I will say the Ruger factory barrel nuts are pretty rough to get off, so you might have to cut it off. That's just something to consider. In my case, mine did come off without having to cut it. I put on a mil-spec barrel nut, called it a day, and was able to drop this in. Now, the other option that Midwest offers, if you don't even wanna deal with removing the entire barrel and assembly to get this rail on, is cutting off the delta ring. So if you have a normal platform, you don't wanna deal with doing anything with taking the barrel off and you just want to install this rail, if you have a Dremel, you can cut that thing off and you're good to go. So that's another option. As far as overall assembly, you have a bunch of freaking screws holding this thing together. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws on the bottom of this rail that are holding it into place. So this thing is rigid, and I would say that it's actually even more rigid than a drop-in quad rail or a free float rail. And because of the assembly of this rail, it really is free float. Other than, of course, the front sight block, you are not really getting any contact whatsoever on the rail itself. So I think, personally, this is a far superior rail setup, and I really, really like it. The price point is phenomenal, and if you're not looking to spend Daniel Defense prices and you still want a totally bomb-proof rail, this extended carbine rail from Midwest is absolutely the way to go. And the final point I want to make about this rail is aesthetics, you know, especially on this Ruger rifle and any other rifle like this that has a standard more bull barrel profile on the end. You don't have the cool looking M4 grenade launcher cut or anything like that, it's just smooth all the way out. So when you're putting in a drop in quad rail, it just, there's kind of, it, the look is not as great. Performance, of course, no problem, but I'm just not a fan of it. So having this extended rail makes it look like a lot better of a setup with this rail out in the front. Yes, it's gonna add a fraction of weight, but it's not the end of the world. And again, it's just gonna completely transform your basic AR upper into a very, very cool and usable setup. If you guys have any other questions about this rail or anything else on the channel, please throw them down below in the comment section and I absolutely will get back to you. While you're down there, head up to the description, check out the links to support the channel. And as always, stay tuned for more great videos coming soon.